Welcome. Welcome to the ASX strategy session. And thank you for joining me again for another another week of talking about the about the market. So as always, we're going to be talking Welcome. about the ASX 200. The ASX strategy session. Um, thank you for joining me again for another, another week of we're going to be looking at the um, ASX 200. We'll go through the um, the small ordinaries. Uh, we're also going to have a look at copper, gold, uranium, and uh, and also I've got a couple of really interesting stocks to to show you and have a look at. So we're going to save them for a bit later on, and then we're going to do the Q and A afterwards. So make sure you you stick around for that and and put in a few questions if you've uh, you've got some. And um, I'm going to save all the questions till the end. So so wait until the end to really start putting those questions in. Now, before we get started, as always, everything that I'm talking about is general advice. Doesn't take your personal situation into account. So um, have a quick look at the disclaimer. Make sure you understand that. If you have any questions, um, yeah, let me know. But it's all, but it's all, all, um, all general advice only. Okay. Well, with all of that said, let's um, let's start to get into our into our first chart. So, got the first first chart up on the up on the screen now, and uh, this is the uh, ASX two hundred. And uh, look, really, really interesting week. What we what we've had last week, we were speaking about the potential for a, for a bounce off of support, and uh, and we've certainly got that. We've got a really strong bounce off this support as well. Support came in at around six thousand eight hundred and fifty, and we just had this situation where. Market was very much stretched below these these moving averages. We've got the 15 to 100 day moving averages, and uh, and we've got that that strong rebound off the of the support. Really, very much a V shaped V shaped um, bounce. And uh, what I wanted to see, what I was talking about last week, is what was what was uh, the bounce if we got one? What was it going to look like? Was it going to be a, a shallow type of bounce within which then set the market up for a potential? retest and then break of support or was it going to be something stronger and we got the we got the stronger variety so that's that's an encouraging sign uh let's just jump over to the the four hourly chart for a moment and have a look at that so you can really see the strength of the rally through the the four hourly chart i uh, just compress that a bit that's uh, the the big um support level we've been watching for for five months uh so the the, the, the rebound has been just as strong as that that sell off sell off that we saw and and now it's a case of like what's going to happen now we're back up at this resistance band after the bounce and um, and I want to want to see what that price action looked like as it plays out over the next next few days just coming back to the the daily chart and I think what's been really interesting over the last really the last five months now is that Every time the market sells off, there's always been been strong buying interest. The buying interest has um, has quickly come in and pushed the market upwards. So it does show that there's some sort of underpinnings beneath this market. Whether that gives way or not, well, that's time will tell. But at the moment, we can see there is is demand on on dips. And the problem we've had though is that none of these rallies have been able to gain traction. So we we get the strong buying. But then there's not the follow-through buying, and that's what's kept the market range-bound. And and this sort of price action, it really t is typical of uh, of range-bound markets. And uh, I think it's really been a situation of the ASX 200 continuing to work off this this super strong rally that we had from 20 from the 2020 low through 2021. Markets are like and just just. Thinking about how how big that rally was, that was uh, that was a seventy one percent rally over the space of oh look under eighteen months. So when you get price action like that, you've got to expect you're going to get the the payback period, which is the difficult rain down trading. That's what we've been. That's very much what we've been seeing, and uh, I think. While the, the rally that we've had off the lows, while as encouraging as I think it is, we've got to be mindful that we still have a market which is trading beneath declining moving averages, so the 50 to 100 day moving averages. And so for me, it's, it's, it, it's hard to buy a market which is below moving averages. Yes, the rebound looks encouraging, but um, you know, this remains, this remains a, a sticking point. Uh, I'd like to see how this how this um, pullback we're seeing now plays out, 
it's um if it's like a shallow pullback where the market just tracks sideways for for a week or two well then maybe it starts to set up a platform to, to then try and try and push higher but look there's a bit more price action to to happen before we can we can tell that uh and should that happen look it does set up the potential for for another rally i think i think this year's chop the chop that we've had all throughout this year I think it still can potentially resolve to the upside. So when you compress this and you go, look, we've had a, a big up move, a big consolidation, it potentially sets the stage for another up move. That's, I think that still is the potential of this market. But at the moment, we don't have the price action to say, look, it's, um, it's all starting to happen. And so for that reason, I'm just not in a hurry to go out there and do a whole lot, to buy a whole lot of stocks, to invest in the index whilst we're below these moving averages because these situations they can deteriorate even though what we saw last week was encouraging so i don't want to preempt i don't want to preempt a more positive scenario uh let the price action lead the way for us so very much a case by case basis for me and i'll talk about that a little bit later on when i go through those through a couple of stocks i want to tell you about and uh and also it's a case of exiting stocks that are that are struggling and uh, and that that's very much what I've been um, what I've been doing. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment as well. Before I get to that, let's jump over to the the small ordinaries. And again, we've had a good bounce off of support during the week, but it does remain a vulnerable situation because you can see we've got these declining moving averages, and we have the when we have the small ordinaries in. It, well, it does at this point look a clearly defined downward trend. So for that reason, I say it still looks still looks vulnerable, and there's no immediate sign that we've got a lasting low. Could turn into something lasting, but at the moment, there's nothing to say. Well, look, this is this is it. The market's starting to turn around, and just looking at this chart in isolation, it's um, I'd have to say that the overall trend does remain to the the downside, and. Uh, and I think a retest of this September low from, from last year, it does remain a distinct possibility. Now, that's out of step with that more encouraging scenario I've been talking about in the ASX 200. And I think this makes the current environment just that, that extra bit difficult in that it's um, we, we don't have clear signs, we don't have consistency across the indices and across, across markets. And uh, very much the same situation in the US where, where tech's doing well, small cap's doing poorly, and then you've got this big section of, of um, stocks in the middle, which are, which are very much mix, mixed. So I'm hopeful that we can. this could still turn into some sort of a large basing pattern, but there's just a no immediate sign that, uh, that, a, that, a, that a lasting low is in. It's, um, I think... I think it just remains that case of being cautious, cautious, managing risk. Uh, most of my recent trades have been exits. There've been a, there's been a little bit of buying, but most mostly I've been exiting stocks which have just been uh, giving ground, which have been just deteriorating that little bit too long. There's been time to to push them out, and uh, and that's what I've been doing. If the stock hits its exit level, I don't want to give it the benefit of the doubt. I don't want to give it more time. I've just been getting out. And I'll show you what I'll show you what I mean. I was going to show you this last week, but I um yeah I messed up messed up my screen sharing. So I'll show you I'll show you what I mean this week. So just have a look at this. This is a stock which left my portfolio. It was last week. Now this is uh, Neuron Pharmaceutical, and this has been this has been a this has been a really good good trade for me. So this is where I got in back. Um, uh, back, oh, when was it? It was, it was a bit over a year ago. Actually, I missed the entry point that I was meant to get in. Um, something was happened. I was distracted. I missed a signal on, on the day. The market ran. I hesitated. And it was, uh, it was about a month later where I actually got in. But that's one of those things. It's just one of those interesting lessons in stocks in that when a, when, when a stock starts to run, if you miss the first time you should enter, often it pays to jump on board at, at some point because nothing's more frustrating than seeing a, a stock you should have bought run away without you on it. So I had a late entry, but I still had a great result. Got a really good good upward run. 
stock has started to decline over um, over recent months, hit my stop loss, my trailing stop. This is this red line below. So this this is a screenshot from my from my trading software that I use for the Motion Trader service to to come up with the signals, calculate the signals each day, and uh, and uh, and this was my exit. And then sure enough. As soon as I exit, there's a rebound. So some people will look at that and say, hey, you should have given it a little bit more time because often these stocks rebound and they do. And you give it a little bit more time, you, it can work out. But it doesn't always go this way. This is another stock which I which I exited on the, um, uh, I think it was last, last week as well. This one is Avita Medical. Same sort of really good entry. Got a nice upward move from it over over the space of about twelve months. Stock started to decline, hit the trailing stop, and I got myself out. Now, had I given it a bit, a little bit longer, had I just yes said okay, I'll give it another five ten percent. Look what happens. There's a gap lower, and it's a you know, it's a mess. The moving averages are crossing. Prices below the averages. I don't want to be in a, in a stock like that now. So the best scenario for me was to exit around when my, my stop was hit. So that's what I'm just doing with my, my portfolio. I'm not holding and hoping for rebounds because a lot of the time they rebound, but it's not the rebounders that do damage to your portfolio. It's the ones that don't rebound and the ones where which start to gap lower, they're the ones that can cause the damage. So I think having that discipline exit point really can make a difference. Now, I'm going to get into some commodities in a sec, but look, if you're getting some some value from value from this, please hit that like button, leave a short comment. If you're watching live, you can't leave a comment on YouTube. You can only leave the comments on YouTube after the video is is not live. But please hit that like button all the same, and uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Tell me if you like like the this new format that we're that we're doing. And uh, now, so let's um. Let's switch over and go to some commodities. So let me just get my get my charts back where I need them. And here we go. So let's um let's kick off with with gold. So last week, last week we were talking about the possibility of um of a bounce, a bounce off this support. And, and that's certainly been what we've got. It's um again a bit like the ASX 200. We've got that V type. Um, sort of sort of bounce, and so this 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 has actually been a stronger recovery than I was thinking we were going to going to see, and uh, and just jump over to the four hourly chart for a moment and just have a look at how it how it shapes on up on that because that's interesting as well. So we go to the four hourly, you can um you can see well you can see the support level that we broke down from that gold broke down from uh, a couple of weeks ago where we were last week, strong rebound. So we're right now beneath this, this um, old support, which is now resistance. So it's going to be interesting to see how gold performs, how it trades over the next few days. Uh, we come back to, let's just come back to our, our daily chart. Um, I want to see what, what a consolidation looks like beneath this resistance. So if we get we get a shallow consolidation that just, just chops sideways, it does then present the possibility that we get a platform for gold then to be able to rally off, start to retake these moving averages. So that'd be that'd be a terrific outcome if, if that happened. We don't have that price action at the moment. As it stands, we are below declining moving averages. So I don't want to jump ahead and start saying, look, the, the, the low's in, although it does does look does look encouraging. Um, yeah, it's not dissimilar to the pattern that we're seeing in the ASX 200 in the moment. Um, I think that the issue issue I have with with gold, like I, I think that the medium to longer term outlook on on gold is still looking looking really good. The issue uh, with gold is when we look at some of the, the gold stocks. So say we look at um, uh, look at a stock like um, let's say we have a look at a stock like like Newmont. I can just find it here in my list. They're just having a stock at, look at a stock like Newmont, so the biggest gold producer, and you can see that Newmont is still very much in a in a clearly defined downward trend. Uh, we've rebounded to the moving averages, but we've had lows that have rebounded to the moving averages several times before, and then have given way to, to lower levels. So it's um, it's you know, it's not an encouraging situation when you look at Newmont, and you can look at look at other ones. Look at look at a stock like Barrick, another large 
producer. It's the same story. It's the, these gold stocks don't look set up for a turnaround at this point. They could, at best case, they could take several months potentially to, to form some sort of low and, and follow what, what the gold price is, um, is, is doing and the way it's looking constructive. So some courage and sign, signs in gold, but we need to see those, those gold stocks start to do something more, more constructive with their price action. It's you know, like, like we've got this stock market generally at the moment. We've got, we've got big caps doing one thing, small caps doing another. We've got, we've got cross currents everywhere. It's, it's just a difficult environment. That's just the environment we have. It's a case of seeing this period through, and at some point the trends will return. Everything will start to move back into sync. We've just got to get there, protect our risk, and, uh, and just, just be cautious while we move through to, to more, um, more suitable periods for, for being able to make some money from these, these markets. Um, but look, with gold, I'm, in the meantime, I'm happy to hold my, keep my longer-term holdings, keep my longer-term positions. But before I do some more tactical plays, yeah, it's just wait for that price action. Um, let's, have a, let's go over and have a, a look at copper. Um, because copper is interesting in that it hasn't rebounded like gold through the week. If anything, you'd say this is this is that shallow sort of bounce set that I worry about when when things are in downtrend because you get moves when you get a get a market that moves swiftly to the downside, sits on the floor and goes sideways. It does usually resolve in in further moves to the uh, to the downside. So copper remains a concern. It's below these declining moving averages. Uh, it, it does look like it is going to retest uh, lower levels at this point. There's just no immediate sign of a of a base. I think that I think that as I've said for for months now, I think the longer term story looks great. It looks like we had that great run off the the 2020 low. Uh, I think it, copper almost doubled. Copper pretty much doubled over that 12 month period, and we've had the long long you know work off period since then which just doesn't look like it's complete so i like that longer term potential but the current price action doesn't agree and uh, and the price just continues to weaken and whilst that's the case it's like well i think it's best stand aside nothing wrong earning 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 interest on your money while you wait for the opportunities part of the skill of investing is is waiting for the setups waiting for the right time and not losing money by looking for looking for opportunities which just might not be ready. Um, I'm going to have a look at oil because oil has been interesting through the week. A lot of um, lot of media coverage around oil and I know, know a lot of um, uh, a lot of viewers are interested in what, what the oil price is doing. So we've had this pullback to support over the last, last couple of weeks. Also pullback to the moving averages, again, the 50 and the 100 day moving averages. So the overall setting remains positive. We've got the moving averages crossed back in early August. They're rising. Price has been rising. You can see this um, resistance, which oil broke above. Uh, when was that? That was that was about about six weeks ago, uh, five six weeks ago, at around around that eighty three dollar mark. Got a break up above, above resistance, and you can see this this level has been a technically active area for for look, almost um, two years now, uh, pulled back to that. So you'd expect oil would find some sort of support around, around current levels. What I've, what I've found interesting, though, is when, when listening to the media, they give the impression that oil's already trading up at $100, uh, but it's not. It's sitting down here on support. So from that perspective, it doesn't, um, the, the, you know, the, the shallowness of the bounce and the, the the excitement around oil should be higher than it actually is. Maybe it's a sign that oil just isn't going to be doing anything too exciting in the uh, in the near term. Maybe it does need to to to, to chop around for for several months before maybe having another go at turning higher, or maybe this turns into a false break and it heads heads lower. I don't know which way it goes. We've got some clearly defined levels. Should oil get back down to um, below 80, well, I think you'd say, well, this was a false break. If it can hold support and chop around, well, then maybe it's a case of developing a new base over several months before maybe turning higher. It was interesting. I was having a look at um, the XLE, which is a US-based ETF, energy, energy sector ETF. And if I can just, what I'll do, let me just, let's just... Um, 
compress this up a bit. And you can see when you look across here, there's um, quite a bit of resistance. So really, we could almost say that's a triple top resistance band, which comes in at around just below, below 95. And it's a, one of those cases since 2020, Energy's had a great run. Now it's tracking sideways. It's like another one of those big sideways bands where it consolidates a, a previous large move. Um, looking at it closer, nearer term, maybe this, it, look, it doesn't look especially exciting in the near term um, and it doesn't appear like the most asymmetric of entry points just beneath a resistance band. So I think energy looks interesting overall, but from a shorter term perspective, and the inability of oil to really rally over the last week, maybe it's a sign that things aren't quite ready to, to go in, um, in oil. Now, let's, um, let's go over and have a look at uranium. And I think, um, I think this looks like we've now got a notable high. I spoke about this last week. I said, look, maybe this finally we've seen some sort of an important peak in uranium, more price action that suggests that that's... Um, that's a, that's um, that's the case. Now, I think there are, I think there are a couple of ways this could be played. So, for those who are like shorter term, more like like what we call swing traders, we're looking for moves over maybe several weeks or a you know, couple of months. Maybe maybe this would be like a, a take profit sort of region because it does look like uranium may need to do some work before it can uh, really potentially get going again. Maybe it doesn't get going again either. We don't know. But before it could potentially get going, it might need to do several months of, of work. Um, the alternative play is, um, is the way I play it. It's like look for those big medium-term moves, which could run over you know, one or two years. And they often involve sitting through periods of consolidation where the price goes sideways. You give back some of the gains from the high. Sometimes these moves don't continue and they ebb their way all the way back down to where you got in and... You give back, give back all your gains. Um, so you don't know. This is a, that's the risk with taking a medium-term approach. You don't know which ones are going to run a long way or which ones are going to stall and then come back. Uh, my feeling is we're looking at a multi-month um, correction in in uranium. Just putting on some some Fibonacci's. Uh, you can see the like like say the price were to come back towards the moving averages back into the Fib range. Well. There's, it shows there's a, it's, it's a bit below where current prices are, but not, not tremendously below. Uh, if uranium can find support, and I'm looking at the, um, the Toronto, the Toronto Stock Exchange listed Sporot Physical Uranium Trust, when I talk about uranium. So if it can hold around, um, say, 20 to 21, go sideways for several months, I think that would be a, be a, be a good outcome. Uh, look, I think this is one of the better medium to longer term setups in commodities. So it's um, one which I'm looking to hold, but of course everyone's got to make up their own mind what um, what works best for them. Now we're going to get on to some Q and A in a moment, but first of all, let's just have a look at um, have a look at a couple of couple of stocks which have been interesting over the last over the last um, well, ones I've been looking at this week, um, which have turned up in the signals, or ones which have started to evolve since getting a signal. So the first one I want to show you is DDR, which is Dicker Data. This one actually came up in the signals yesterday. And DDR, they're a, they're a wholesale distributor of um, hardware and software for computers. So they, they're buying brands from um, uh, companies like Microsoft and Dell, and then they're, they're reselling them into, into businesses. Um, uh, from what I can see, they've had some good profit growth in the, the first half, market cap about $1.7 billion. As always, go and do your own research on the fundamentals and things. This is not an area I'm really, really focusing in on, but it does does look does look interesting. And as I say, it turned up in the signals. So what's the reason for it turning up in the signals, of course, is these moving averages of cost, the 50 and the 100 day. And we've now got the um, the price starting to rise above it. I'll just compress this a little bit first, just give you a little bit of idea where it's come from. Uh, it really was a boom stock during the um, um, you know, 2019 through to 2022. Uh, wind really came out of the sales during last year, and then not a lot has gone on this year as it looks like it's formed some sort of a base. So it's one of those recovery-type plays. And uh, so we've got this moving average crossover, which I like. 
And what was interesting, when we got the, um, this, this, this breakout in August, the price then went into, into this um, tight compression band, which you often see. You often see that when a price um, breaks above, goes from below moving averages to above moving averages, they'll then often pause, consolidate in this compression band, let the moving averages catch up and then have another run. So this is, this is I really like this type of um, setup when, I, when we see it. Um, just having a look at some volume. I'm going to put a volume study on. And what we can see is we had lots of volume on, the, uh, on this big up move. Then as we went into the compression band, you can see the volume started to, started to um, uh, get lighter. And just in the last few days, as prices have moved up, volume started to pick up. So they're, they're positive signs that we're getting in, in, um, in, in the data. Uh, I think it's one of those ones which um, look, it's got got I think it's got potential to continue running over the um, over over the months ahead. You never know which ones are really going to run a long way, but it's got the potential. Just putting in some support and resistance coming in around, just following this across, could probably come across a bit further. What do we have over here? Uh, look, you can see there's there's certainly some sort of a technical region around. Around ten dollars twenty, sort of, sort of, um, sort of mark, and that's what we're just breaking above now. So we're getting a, a secondary breakout, got an early breakout, getting a secondary breakout above those averages. Looks looks interesting to me. Also interesting to see how it bottomed out. You can see that uh, last uh, in May made a new low, no follow through selling quickly rallied back made another new low in in june again no follow through selling quickly rallied back another new low in july no follow through selling quickly rallied back so that sort of price action to me suggests that everyone who's like it suggests that the selling is potentially has potentially been exhausted and uh and it's now a new accumulation phase so Interesting one to, to, to keep an eye on, um, Dicker Data. Now, another one that's caught my eye is a stock called Points Bets Holding. PBH is the ticket code for Points Bet. So let's just have a look at this. And let's compress this first, see where it's come from. And you can see that, um, look, from its 21 peak, it was a complete debacle. Stock stock fell away, lost something like 90% of its value over um, over a couple of years. So it's been a disaster. So I'd, I'd say this is probably a more more of a, a speculative type play. So what what points bets all about? It's an online betting shop. They've got uh, they've got operations in Australia, the US. Although I think they're selling their US operations, Canada, Ireland. Uh, it's not profitable. Got a market cap of about 240 million, but it's not profitable at this point. So of course that makes it more more than the speculative line. But it does have that interesting chart set up. So we've seen that 95% fall. Just looking at the, the daily chart, uh, I think the price action since around June has been quite constructive in that we've had we've had um, strong moves to the upside. The consolidations have been relatively shallow and sideways. Uh, moves to the upside, again, short, shallow consolidation, upside consolidation. And it's uh, moving averages crossed back in back in June, and uh, it's been generally rising along the line of the moving averages since then. Um, it triggered the motion trader signal in early September as we're just breaking above uh breaking above this resistance band, which is now support, which comes in at around 70. And you can see this level has been, a, again, it's been one of those technically active regions. So 70 is like, sort of like a good good marker to, to keep an eye on with uh, points bet in it where, where, where it's currently positioned. It's also interesting because you can sort of like see a, a bit of a rounding bottom. When you look at look at the price action over the last, over the last year, so let me just put this in, in and you can see how, how the, the price has declined. The selling started to dry up. The, 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 the lows started to not become as low, like as we saw in August, wasn't able to make a new low. And now we've got a series of, of higher lows as the price is rounding to the top side. So those rounding bases are interesting when you, when you see them. And uh, so look, there's no certainty with any of, any of these, these chart patterns 
and momentum studies because they don't all run. But it's a case of just having that consistent strategy. You're looking for those same sort of setups and and just playing them consistently, you know, managing your risk. So something like points bet, you could say, look, um, uh, at current prices, an exit stop could be even just, just below this support at around 70. Say it was around um, 63 cents. That's you could say like 15, a 15% exit stop would be a possible scenario on a stock like this. And you go, okay, what's my upside potential? Well, if this was to, to even get back to, to where it was um, in you know, mid-22, you're looking at levels considerably higher. So 15% of risk for, I don't know, 70, 80, 100% of potential upside. So I emphasize this potential upside because you never know which ones are going to run and which ones are going to fail. But it's asymmetric in that you can control the risk, but you can get considerable upside if it runs and it runs a long way. Um, and of course, 15% is just a number I've come up using this support. You could also use a, a wider stop if you wanted to give it more, more room to move. So I think um, I think we should move on to a few Q and A before we we wrap up for the day, and uh, and been asked about a about a about a couple of a couple of stocks. So let's start with um, one stock. We've got a question on is a company called MP One. So that's Megaport Megaport Limited, and with Megaport. Look, interesting stock. It's in an uptrend. You can see those moving averages are, are rising. Prices above the averages. Let's just compress it, have a little bit more look at the data. And uh, yeah, one of those ones where there was a, a big move during 2020, 2020 and 2021, big decline in 2022, like a lot of stocks, but then it looks like it's gone through, maybe it's gone through a basing period. And this is a sort of move which I think is potential in, in stocks like um, DDR and PBH that the average has crossed and we're into a new accumulation phase. Uh, trend remains up. There's no sign that it's stalling other than we're going sideways at the moment following these, these, um, this initial rally. Uh, if I was holding this, I'd, I'd continue holding it. There's no sign for me. Given my medium-term approach, remember, I'm looking for stocks that could run for one to two years. On that basis, using a wide trailing stop, if I'm in at a, in at a, a good level, um, I've got no reason to sell a stock like like this, I want to see how far it could run. Uh, now I've got a question for about CU6. So that is um, uh, Clarity Pharma. And just getting my mouse to re-engage, there it goes. So like, first thing I like to do, I like to get a little bit of perspective on where it's come from. So you'll always see me compress the chart. Where, where's this stock come from? Um, big decline, um, initial stages of a recovery, then a more you know, a lengthier um, and deeper deeper pullback. Averages crossed again, it's starting to run. So it's one of those stocks which has the potential to continue to run. Uh, it's it's pulled back to the moving averages. So at the moment, there's there's nothing nothing uh, unusual about the way it's it's that we're seeing the price action. We're seeing a you know, an impulsive run up. So impulsive in that we've got. Higher highs, higher lows, and the and the and the runs, um, the the periods where it, where it, where it runs upward is uh, a lot stronger than the periods where it, where it pulls back. So that's what I'd call an impulsive move. And then so far, I'd say this is a corrective sort of move back to those averages. Uh, it's a sort of stock which could require further consolidation, could require several months of sideways, uh, or it could continue to to ebb away. Um, I don't know. I don't know which way it's going to go. But at the moment, it is fitting the criteria for a stock which does have the potential to continue running. Um, as I say, we never know which ones are going to continue running or how far they'll run for. But it's um, it's just playing it's, it's playing odds basically. You know, things that run, um, the path of least resistance is upwards. So you just just play that out, and see where it goes. And if it doesn't doesn't base here, if it continues to fall, well, there's there can be an exit strategy to to get out. Um, being asked about CRN and CRN, um, it's a resources stock. And let's see, so one of those ones again, big upward move, large correction. The correction this one's been from the beginning of this year. 
and what coincides with, with that large move up we saw during 21 and 22. Um, but then we get the, um, and this is the thing, like I, I don't want to buy, I don't want to try and pick the low as a stock is falling. When it's below these declining moving averages, it's just, I think the odds are against stepping in and having a go. Here's a great example of a shallow consolidation. So sharp downward move or steady, steady decline, um, sideways consolidation. You can actually even draw that in on, on the on the um, on the chart you get the um yeah the classic um flagging formation knowing when your market doesn't work yeah so down flagging formation broke to the downside so you know always watch these shallow consolidations when it moves to the downside because they often resolve with with further selling but um since then we've had the, the moving averages cross got a breakout to the top side now the question is will this continue to run and that's what we we don't know or will this turn into more of um will it become a stock that just tracks sideways for 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 many more months you can never tell so it's a case of going with the signals and seeing where they go and if they don't go far you use your exit strategy get out get into something else and see where that will take you and some of these some of these some of these stocks can take you a very long way but we again we don't know which ones until till we look back in in hindsight but at this stage pull back to the moving average the, the upward potential remains remains in play. Now, I've been asked about a stock called ticker code MTS and Metcash owns the um, IGA supermarket. Um, interesting one, look at this, moving averages are just starting to cross and it's just starting to get above some, some near-term resistance at around um, $3.80. Let's just compress it a little bit. And uh, yeah, look, it looks like one of those ones where we've had a really nice upward move and in a period of consolidation where it's held on to most of those gains from 2020 and 2021. And, and this is the 2022 period where a lot of stocks struggle, but, but Metcash has really, really held us own quite well. Um, this was an interesting period here. So if I can draw in, it would have been some... Uh, you could you could frame this up as a as a as a trading range where the price fell back sideways within the range started to break down, but there wasn't a whole lot of follow through selling. Quickly snapped back, so that's an, that's an encouraging sign when you see that when you get a breakdown, you don't get the follow through selling. So if this was really going to come apart, that was the opportunity for that to happen. And it's now come back to the breakout point consolidated now it's starting to edge higher again as i say the crossing averages break to a high that's a stock i'd be um i'd be keen to um keep an eye on it's uh it's certainly got some i think it's certainly got some potential and um now i've been asked about a stock of a uk stock t-o-r-m let me just see whether i can get that t-o-r-m um that must be it there Yeah, it's, uh, what do we think of this? So big move up, correction, solidation. Uh, look, the moving averages are positive. It's, I don't, I don't know whether this is, like given the, the extent of that move, this could turn into one of those stocks that, that then, you know, you know travels sideways for, for, for months and months and then maybe breaks upwards again. Or other ones don't 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 break upwards. They then they then start to um, you know taper off and, and come back. So it's you know, there's no way to know what what's going to happen um, from an asymmetric perspective. I just struggle buying a stock that's that's gone you know, that that's run so far. And it it is you know, technically you'd say look it's above those moving averages. The moving averages are rising. Uh, if I had some, I'd continue to hold it. There's no reason to sell it. But I just don't think I'd be too keen to buy it just here. I'd also look at there's, you know, you'd probably expect to find resistance at previous highs. So it's one which, um, yeah, uh, it, it's probably not my favourite type of type of setup. A uh, couple of motion trader stocks, MAD, Matter Group. Now, Matter's been a terrific performer over, over several years and we're getting a pullback at the moment. And so it's not unusual to get big pullback you can see Matt has given some big pullbacks in the past. So, so like, look at this period here. That actually doesn't look dissimilar to what we're seeing now. So this is back in 2002 where the stock um, had hit an all-time high and then pulled back 
31%. So this is the advantage of, of wide trailing stops. Yes, they give back more profit when they eventually, or when they get, get hit, but they also can keep you in these big trends for a lot longer. So uh, Motion Trader was able to ride off that 31% decline as the stock stabilised and kept going up. And you can see, you know, there's more, there's more pullbacks. There's another, another big pullback here. Wide trailing stop kept in a, kept us in a, a um, almost a thirty percent decline. Now here we are. Where are we now? What's the decline so far? That is so far a twenty four percent decline. So it's well within the, within the parameters of what we've seen in the past, where the stock has been able to stabilise and rally. It's come back to the moving averages as we've seen it at, at various other points along this this rally. Sometimes it's overshot the moving averages to the downside, which it has here. But this is what we don't know. Is this, is this it? Have we seen the peak and it's now getting ready to, to come down and trigger the trailing stop or will it stabilise and go up? And absolutely nobody can give you the answer to that. It's a case of, I think, if you want to trade medium-term trends and you want the potential to ride stocks which might go up 100, 200, 500% or more, the only way I know to do that is you've got to give them plenty of room to move and you've got to concede that you're going to give back, um, uh, you, you're going to end up sitting back through a, maybe a, a 25 to 30, 35% pullback at some point which will trigger your stop and you're going to give back some of the gain. But the only way to get that gain in the first place is to have that wide stop. So there's 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 no way around it where you get that 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 free pass to make a lot of money without any any um, unpleasantness in the the pullbacks along the way. Um, if I were holding matter, I'm not holding it. But if I were, I'd continue holding it. If I'd held it for the motion from the motion trader signal, I think it could be up something like five hundred percent. If it was becoming a, an abnormally large position in my portfolio, I might consider trimming some of that that um, that position to make it more of a, um, a not such a, a weighty position. I've done that before with um, one stock in particular, a company called Jumbo Interactive. A few years ago, it, it went from a, a, something like rough numbers, a, a, a two percent part of my portfolio to a fifteen percent part of my portfolio. So I just thought, look, this is just too big a position. I'm just going to sell, I think I sold a third of it just to just to bring it back to something which I was more comfortable with. But you know, there's no there's no right or wrong there. So I think think matter remains in an uptrend at this point. Um, moving along, having a look at um, let's have a look at um, uh, oh I've got I've got a lot of a lot of questions. Would you add to a position during a during a correction? It's a it's a really good good question. Let's um let's just use the um let's use matter since we've got it up on the on the chart. A lot of people like to buy the dip. I've got no problem with buying dips. Buying dips can be can be a very effective strategy. It's just a matter of what dip do you buy. So using matter, matter is a stock which has been mostly trading above rising moving averages. The time to buy a dip, I think, is when a stock which is in an upward trend pulls back to its averages. That's when I'm interested in buying a dip. So it could be a case of um, having having orders, you know, back around the 100-day moving average. Like, yeah, you know, noting with with matter, the averages aren't like magic support zones that will stop the stock. It has overshot on several occasions. Um, I don't. Think I'd really want to buy while it's below the moving averages, but as it's pulling back, if it looked like it was getting support and bouncing, yeah, look, buy buy the dip, buy the dip there. You could, um, you know, there's several dips and matter where you say, hey, the the stock's running, it's pulled back, it's sitting on the averages. Maybe that's maybe that's a dip that that I'd want to consider buying, um, where it rebound, hits an average and starts to rebound. Maybe that's a dip I'd consider buying. So they they're all good examples of buy the dip. Um, a dip, dip I don't want to buy is I'm just going to a stock which I know has been through a large downtrend, Magellan Financial. Um, this is the sort of dip I don't want to buy. I don't want to buy it when a stock is declining below the average. Um, even if it had been, even if it had been a, you know, a previous market favourite, don't want to buy it when it's below the moving averages. It just opens the risk that you get a stock that continues to decline. Um, wait for the breakouts. I think it puts the odds in your favour. 
Um, IHL, let's have a quick look at IHL. Uh, so I'll just do a few more. It's just not going to be possible to go through every stock in these. Otherwise, we'll be going for um, for a few hours. Um, IHL, look, just, just quickly off the bat, it's in, in that clear downtrend below declining moving averages. So it's not one I could, I'd, I'd look at at the moment. Um, I'd need that price action to turn around before it could be a, a possibility for, for me. Um, IZS, uh, big run. Not a stock I'd be looking to buy. I don't think it's not even a dip I'd be looking to buy because I look where this stock has come from. It's come from thirty cents up to three dollars. Mm. That's like you know tenfold. It's um, I'd, I'd put this in there. Like, is it an asymmetric entry point? Could you make money? Yes, you could make money. Is it asymmetric? Probably not. Not for me because I'm looking at like where's my where's my downside? Where do I put my stop loss? If I were to buy now, where do I put my stop? What could I make? Maybe it just goes back and retests a previous high. So maybe it's like, you know, it's a 50-50. My, my downside risk and my upside potential might be similar. So if I was in it, maybe I'd be holding, um, depending on what my stop loss strategy was, I could have possibly seen off this correction and see if it stabilises and continue up. Um, but it's not a stock I'd be looking to, looking to get. And um, what else do we have? Got a NASDAQ stock. Have a look at TPST. Pharmaceutical. Oh, oh, I can't do much with this one. It's, um, yeah, it's like, that, 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 that's not price action I can work with where something is. I don't know if this is correct price action as well. I don't, I don't know. But where it goes from uh, lengthy decline to spike upwards. That's in the, I'd put that one in the um, the, the too hard basket. Um, now I'm being asked about, is that I, AIG? AFG. Okay. okay. Let's make this one the last one. I need to need to wrap this up because I'm going to, I'm mindful of your time and uh, I've also got to do the video for the US stocks. Um, uh, Australian Financial Group, it's, um, uh, look like, like this is one of those ones, big, big decline, look like we're getting some sort of a base, moving averages cross and the price broke higher. Um, continued onwards nicely for for several weeks, uh, but then it's had this, this sharp decline. Um, I think this is a motion trader stock. It'd still be above its above its exit stop. It's it's not, this isn't a dip I'd want to buy because the moving averages have now crossed and the price is below the averages. And it could, like the reason Motion Trader uses a wide initial stop is to, to, to see off, see off um, initial volatility and to reduce the need to have a lot of turnover in stocks because quite often stocks can whip around above a, a wide stop and then move, move upwards. Uh, it can be part of a lengthier basing process. But then, of course, some will some will just just simply fail and uh, and continue down, and trigger the stop. So, at the moment, it's um, depending what your exit strategy is. Like I use a time exit for a lot of my stocks. If, I've, if it's been in the portfolio for for um, the the set amount of time, it isn't performing. I'll exit it. I won't wait for the stop loss to be be triggered. Um, waiting for 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 a wider stop to be triggered. That's completely viable as well, but not a not a stock I want to buy. It's look, it does still look like it's got the potential for this to be part of a basing structure, but the, the upward momentum is not there at the moment. So, it's um, look, it's not a situation I think that we could um, that could play with. Uh, so, look, let's um, I think let's uh, call that a wrap for this week. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully you've enjoyed the live session. Make sure you give me that like and, uh, and, and give me some comments. Let me know what, you, what you're thinking. And uh, I'll look forward to coming back and talking to you again next week. Till then, 